Greetings this Wednesday morning in November. Actually, it's the day before Thanksgiving. Many of you are probably ready and preparing for the big day tomorrow, and however you might celebrate it in this very unusual year. So we um, take this moment in time to um, praise God, to find some time for prayer and reflection. My name is Ken Pepin. I'm the rector here at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Fairport, New York, and very glad to be with you this morning. So let us um, begin our prayer. God is spirit. Those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise to the Lord a shout with psalms. For you are a great God, you are great above all gods. In your hand are the cabins of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture, and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today we would hearken to your voice. Our psalm chosen for today is uh, a portion of Psalm 119, which is a rather lengthy psalm, so we're pretty glad that it's just a portion. <laughs> I call with my whole heart, answer me, O God, that I may keep your statutes. I call to you, O, oh, that you would save me. I will keep your decrees. Early in the morning I cry out to you, for in your word is my trust. My eyes are open in the night watches that I may meditate on your promise. Hear my voice, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. According to your judgments, give me life. They draw near who in malice persecute me. They are very far from your law. You, O Lord, are near at hand, and all your commandments are true. Long have I known from your decrees that you have established them forever. Behold my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. According to your promise, give me life. Deliverance is far from the wicked, for they do not study your statutes. Great is your compassion, O Lord. Preserve my life according to your judgments. There are many who persecute and oppress me, yet I have not swerved from your decrees. I look with loathing and faithless, for they have not kept your word. See how I love your commandments. O Lord, in your mercy, preserve me. The heart of your word is truth. All your righteous judgments endure forevermore. Rulers have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I am as glad because of your promise as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them, but your law, your law is my law. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your law. For them, there is no stumbling block. I have hope for your salvation, O Lord, and I have fulfilled your commandments. 
I have kept your decrees, and I have loved them deeply. I have kept your commandments and decrees, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you teach me your statutes. My tongue shall sing of your promise, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let me live, and I will praise you, and let your judgments help me. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. Search for your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Our scripture this morning is taken from the continuation of the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was. But on the count of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, Here he has gone to the guest of the one who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, take half my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I'll pay them back time, four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. <laughs> um, two instances today in the scriptures, one in the Psalms and the other here in this gospel, uh, speak about being lost. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had that experience, but um, oftentimes when one is lost or feels lost or is actually physically lost, um, it can be pretty frightening and scary. And, um, and we look for every avenue we can possibly get to find our way by ourselves. And oftentimes the more frustrated we become, the more lost we are. <laughs> and it takes actually someone else to intervene uh, to, quote, save us. And um, God has done that for us. God continues to do that for us in our life, uh, to be our salvation, to be our hope, to be that which brings us back to that connection, to that, uh, to that joy uh, of being um, a child of God. Um, and it's, you know, we find ourselves reading this, and it's, I always found curious is the uh, the response of the disciples, you know, when they saw this sinner, the Zacchaeus guy, who um, I could relate to being short myself and being in a crowd often. Um, it's very difficult to see what's going on ahead of you. And uh, so I, I could feel very um, empathetic to him. But the disciples were like, you know, wait a minute, this guy's like ruthless, you know, he's cheated everybody out of their home and everything else. And, and how can God be taking time to be with him, with the likes of him? And so often we do that, don't we? We, we see something good happening to someone who may be um, having a history of no, being notorious. And we, you know, automatically come and say, hey, that's not fair. This is, this shouldn't be. And yet God's intention is to save the lost, to be present to those who are sincerely turning their hearts over to him. 
And can we not find that in our own life? Uh, can we find those places in our day that might um, invite us to forgive others or to be as generous with God's love um, as Jesus was? Um, that it, people have that ability through the grace of God to, to um, change their ways and to find and to be found. Um, so if we can find that compassion and empathy um, with God, when it involves ourselves being found, can we not have the same empathy and uh, compassion for those who are, who we know around us who might be lost? Hmm. Interesting to think about before Thanksgiving, isn't it? Well, I hope your day is, is, is filled with blessing as we continue our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So today we pray with all our heart, with all our mind. Uh, we pray for peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, for the salvation of all of our souls. We pray for the peace of the world, for the welfare of God's church, for the unity of all people. We pray for our nation, for our leadership that is in transition, uh, and for all in authority. We pray for the good earth which God has given us, the wisdom and the will to conserve it. We pray for those who may be traveling. We pray for everyone during this time of pandemic, that people remain safe, that people take the time to wear masks, to distance, and to, again, uh, be patient. For the aged and the infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and suffering, and all who care for them. For the poor, the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, especially those who recently lost their jobs. We ask, especially in this time of year before the holidays, that God would uh, find them and to uh, guide them through this very difficult time. For all who died in the hope of the resurrection, for all the departed, we pray to the Lord. May God bless us this day, fill us with his grace, find us in those areas of our life where we feel lost, and help us to, again, be guides to those who might be lost in our lives that they might come to recognize the grace of God all around them. May this day be one of fulfillment and peace and celebration of God's grace. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Enjoy your day. Good luck if you're cooking. And uh, hope to uh, pray with you again tomorrow. <laughs>